so happy to see you guys. It's been forever, but I'm not going to keep you waiting because I actually have something to talk about today, but I hope all is well. Um, I have been, uh, you know, we're doing the year of the bride fast again every single day. We only have a few days left. So for those of you that are like, how can I join it? Don't worry about it. You're too late. But I will be doing it again, like at the end of this year. And so, um, you know, and for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm Tiffany. And uh, I have a ministry that God has gifted me with called Covered by God. And um, we fast. We're a fasting and praying ministry. And we fast the first three days of every single month for a few years now. And our fast is coming up on the first. So if you want to join the fast, please go to coveredbygod.co. Again, that is coveredbygod.co. Enter your name and email address. Check your spam folder because a lot of the times our emails land in your spam folder and join us there. Also, uh, I have a book on Amazon. You should go and grab that. It's called The Year of the Bride and it's going to be fire as well. You can pre-order it on Amazon now. And um, yeah, I'm excited about it. Why am I on live today? Now, first of all, I decided to take a little vacation after Millions Conference. And apparently nobody thinks I should take a vacation, okay? Because y'all was like, where are you at? And ma'am, I was asleep, okay? Having a good time. But um, a few people asked me with the year of the bride fast, they're like, we're watching the same videos. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, you're going to watch the same videos. And the reason you're going to do that is because if statistics show that you have to read a book seven times to retain 60% of that information, right? Seven times to retain 60%. You cannot tell me all them videos we did last year. You can remember none of them. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you're going to watch it over and over again until you can retain what you've learned. And that's that. So I'm very excited about this live. Now, the reason I felt... It pretty necessary to go live today is because I have been getting quite a lot of emails with um, DMs, emails, all at one time. And people are like, hey, I'm having dreams of eating in my dreams. And because the majority of these people are, all of them, I believe, are in the year of the bride fast right now. I was like, this is fascinating. Now, I know just, you know, God talks to us all in our special way. Like he's our dad and he has these like special ways he talks to all of us. And for me, whenever I have like this repetition going on and I hear more than one thing at one time, I kind of start taking note to it. And the fact that there were so many people that have been having dreams and in their dreams, they're eating in their dreams and they're a part of this fast, I thought it was fascinating. Now, of course, I immediately knew what was going on. It is um, as disturbing as it is fascinating and, and, and great all at one time. It's like, it's fascinating and disturbing all at once. Let me tell you why it's fascinating. It's fascinating because I want you to understand that curses break, right? It is very easy for a believer to break a curse. The issue is the devil thrives in our ignorance of not knowing that the curse exists or in our ignorance to believe that curses just don't exist anymore, period. And so whatever you don't know or whatever you refuse to come to the revelation of, you really not going to fix no way. This is why whenever you're dealing with somebody and they're like, I don't have this issue and you're like, okay, well, you can't, you can't never work with somebody who doesn't have a revelation that they have an issue to fix. Same thing with curses or anything of that nature. You can't break something that you don't believe is there. But curses expire. They have an expiration date. Um, it's really like a generational thing. Um, and if I really could give you the best revelation, um, I knew somebody, uh, I know somebody, sorry, but she's my color, right? Brown skin, dark, all of that. And her children are light skin with blue eyes. And I'm like, where the heck? Did you get these black babies that with uh, light skinned babies with blue eyes? You and your husband are my color. What's going on? But her grandfather looked like that, right? 
And so I want you to take, you know, I think sometimes it's easier for us to take a look at things in the natural before we see things in the spiritual. So I'm trying to give you a natural example of something. And what I want you to recognize is that even though she was my color, brown eyes, brown skin, dark hair, her children came out light skin with blue eyes because of a grandfather. So what it did was it's the gene skipped her generation and it went to her children. Same exact thing happens in the realm of the spirit where something that your grandparents did can skip you and go to your children or something that your great great grandparents did skip your mother and them and came to you and your children right and so that's an example of that's a physical example i can give because it's much easier for people to have a physical example of things than they do net spiritual so just to give you an example that curses do expire and with all of these people emailing me and DMing me, things of that nature saying, Tiffany, I'm having dreams of eating in my dreams and all of that. It, it made me very excited at first. Let me tell you why. What it's letting me know is that this fast is working. This fast is doing its job. And a lot of the times when we are in a fast, it seems like nothing's happening. It seems like nothing's working. And the enemy wants you to believe that you're doing this for absolutely no reason. You're wasting your time. And if you're anything like me, you feel a little bit less saved than you do while you're fasting, except for when you are fasting. You know, some people feel more saved. Me, I feel a little less saved, you know? And the enemy wants you to feel like your fasting is not working. But what this is indication of is this fast is doing a dent to the kingdom of hell. It is literally causing wahala is causing problems do you understand me and so why do i say that there is evil covenants that's being broken all over the world right this fast people aren't just doing this fast in the united states of america people are doing this fast in nigeria and ghana and israel and india these people are doing this fast all over the entire world australia switzerland we have people all over the world doing this fast all on one accord breaking evil covenants in the bloodline. Well, if you are having dreams of somebody eating, if you're, somebody's feeding you in a dream or you're eating in a dream or somebody's trying to have sex with you in a dream, while you're on this fast, let me let you know what's happening. The enemy is trying to get you to renew the covenant that you just spent your time breaking in prayer and fasting. It's just that simple. The enemy is like, oh, okay, this chick or this dude think that he finna break this fast. And I've been in this family for 15,000 generations as a familiar spirit because I'm familiar with the bloodline. And you think that you are going to be the one to break this curse? Uh -uh -uh. I'm going to catch you while you're sleeping. And so let me say this before we get into uh, the details. And I'll try my very best to keep this live as short as possible because I really want you to retain what I'm saying. And sometimes I get very excited because apparently I have a month worth of uh, revelation that I just want to spill out all over you. But I'm, for the sake of being able to retain what I'm talking about today and sticking on one topic, I'm going to just release this. But let me just say this. Many people think that all hell break loose during a fast. And it's true. All hell technically does break loose during a fast. Uh, a lot of people feel like they should just quit their fast and they should not do it again. But here's what I want you to understand. A fast is not what many people think it is. Many people think that a fast is for God to become a genie for us. We rub on this little bottle. We tell God what we want. Waha, voila, God is there and he gives us what he wants. That's not what a fast is for. The issue here is, is that according to the Bible, God has already given us power and authority to get what we want anyway, if it's according to his will, right? We actually have power and authority to speak to the elements. We have power and authority to make kingly decrees on the earth. We have power and authority to shift um, policies and government. Like the Bible is riddled with uh, history shows that governmental things have always been able to be changed through the power of prayer and fasting. So the issue isn't that we have the power. What fasting does is get rid of your unbelief to, to stop 
to not be in your way of not thinking that that's the case. Unbelief, doubt, fear, pride, all of those things stop prayers from being answered. When you turn down your plate, doing the biblical definition of the word fast, doing the biblical definition, the biblical definition of a fast is abstain from all food for a certain period of time. So your social media fast that you've been doing, not working. Consecration is great. It is a consecration, but it is not the biblical definition of the word fasting. And if the Bible says these these, this kind only come out by prayer and fasting. And you look up the definition of the word kind, and it means like your genealogy. It means your genes. It means your bloodline. It means your kindred. It means what's in your family. And you are consistently turning down social media in replacement for what the Bible declares is the biblical definition of a fast. And you get out of that fast wondering why nothing ever happened. That's why, because you're doing things your own way. And the Bible has a way that God said he wants it done. Right. And so Whenever you're on a fast, it you're already powerful. The issue is you don't know it. So what the fast does is that it shuts down everything, right? It shuts down everything. Let me just say this before we get started, because I want y'all to have just some good decorum and some good chat ethics. If y'all see that I'm talking about fasting and God and stuff like that, why are you asking me business questions in here? Like, I don't. Like, obviously, this live isn't for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to give y'all some Holy Ghost filled information that I just learned today. So I want you to just keep your mind and your thought on that. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to just um, focus on that for today. Because I know y'all got good godly common sense. I know you have some decorum. I know you have good ethics. Especially if you've been following me for a while, I know you got some good sense. So I'm just let I'm just um, let me just put that in there because I didn't want anybody to see that and just feel like they could start posting what they wanted to post as well. So put that in there. So you may start feeling like your fast is a waste of time. Most times when people start to fast, here's what the demon does. Right, these demons are in you from way back when. Not even your fault. Let's say. These things are lying dormant in you, right? These things are lying way dormant. So you don't even see them. You don't see the spirit of lust. You don't see the spirit of perversion. You don't see the spirit of anger. You don't see the spirit of a slumber and laziness. And you don't see the spirit of pride. You don't see um, the spirit of covetousness or jealousy or things of that nature, right? You don't see none of that. The second you decide to fast, all of a sudden you get horny. And you're like, I've never, why am I all of a sudden getting so horny? And I'm not even horny before I'm fasting. Why is this fast bringing out the worst in me? You, you won't believe how many people have emailed me with that issue. You have people that all of a sudden the spirit of slumber comes upon them. And they're like, I don't ever take naps during the day. And all of a sudden I am just the napping, call me the nap star. Okay. I am just yawn and it's only not, not yawning for no, wide awake while you scrolling on social media. Soon as you open up first Kings, all of a sudden the spirit of sleep comes upon you and you just knocked out, right? Doesn't happen before you're fasting though. Before you're fasting, you might be able to get through a couple of, Bi couple of chapters in the Bible, but while you're fasting, knocked out. You could be the nicest person on earth and all of a sudden you get to cussing everybody out. You like, man, I ain't cussed nobody out in about 10 years. Am I even still saved? Why am I a little less saved while I'm fasting? Isn't that a very strong spiritual practice? Why is the worst parts of me coming out while I'm fasting, right? I'm going to tell you why. What you're going through is called a healing crisis. It's called a healing crisis. Let me give you, a, um, let me give you an example in your body and in, in the area of detoxing. Now, we know that if your body is full of sugar, full of trash, full of junk food, and all of a sudden you decided to detox your body, what's going to happen? A lot of people get very bad headaches, migraines, especially if you've been on ca caffeine, coffee, all of that for a while. Uh, a lot of people start getting body odor. A lot of people's faces break out in acne, pimples, um, very bad, very bad facial things. Some people's Tongues turn white. Some people's breath smells awful. It's like death. Um, some people's bowel movements are bad. What I'm trying to say is 
these when you're fasting, which is a detox for your body, right? I'm giving you the, the natural example of the spiritual example I'm going to get back to in a second. But whenever you decide to go on a fast or detox your body, all of the disease, all of the all of the thing that was getting ready to kill you five years from now comes up to the top so that it can be dealt with. That's all it does. It's a blessing, really, but it's called a healing crisis because before you get better, you get a little worse because guess what? That thing, those diseases, that acne that flared up, the body odor that flared up, the massive headaches that you just got, all of those things were lying dormant in you so that it could manifest itself as cancer, as diabetes, as heart disease, as all of these things four to five to 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it was lying dormant. It did not want you to know it existed. It was trying its best to hide from you. Why? Because demonic activity works best when hidden. Demonic activity works best when hidden. Whenever you are fasting, what you are saying to God is, let there be light on the darkest places of my life that need to be healed right? Shine the light, God, on those places of my life that, that don't bring you any glory, that don't bring. And so what God does is bringing it to light is he manifested through your body so that you see all of these ugly parts of you, all of these things. And you're like, it looks like you're getting a little worse than you're getting better. But if you keep coasting through that healing crisis, guess what? Your skin clears up the best it's ever looked in all of your life. That lump that came up that you thought, you know, wasn't good, completely goes away. Blood sugar level, completely back to normal, regulated itself. Body odor, you can't even smell your underarms and you don't even wear deodorant anymore. You literally don't have body odor anymore. So the healing crisis really was just, what am I saying? I'm saying whenever you do a spiritual fast, the same thing happens in the realm of the spirit. So sometimes you have couples, husband and wife that tend to fast, and you're like, man, all hell broke loose. We got along much better than we did when we were fasting. But the truth is, it's called a healing crisis. And this thing between husband and wife was already lying dormant, waiting to explode at the most important part of your marriage and where it could not be um, mended back together again. So what God in his mercy did was he said, let me bring this to the top now so that you guys can see that it exists. And the second you see that it, sh it comes up to the top, you both have not just the knowledge, because the knowledge is that we have an issue that we didn't know was here. We now have the wisdom on what to do with it, which is we're going to war in prayer together because this thing right here that we see is not the problem. You know, this is the problem. We're not the problem. This issue is the problem. And now we're going to not fight each other. We're going to now turn our he to heads together to the problem and go to war with the problem. Because most of the time, if you don't know, you're going to war with each other when you see the problem. But when you have a revelation that this is spiritual and this thing was coming to tear your marriage apart, you're going to say, you know what? Our problem is not each other. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the problem and start to attack and kill that. OK, so whenever you're doing a spiritual fast, that's what's happening. I wanted to kind of bring some relief to those of you who are like, Tiffany, all hell is breaking loose. I'm not even sure if I'm doing this fast right. Maybe I need to quit and start again later. No, even if you just got done cussing somebody out, baby, that thing was lying dormant in you and it was going to manifest itself out at a later time when you got when 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 the when God platformed you or you got a promotion in some area or everything was going beautifully in your life. That thing was waiting to manifest itself at the most important time. This is why you see so many um, men and women of God, you know, reach a certain height of success and all of a sudden fall due to sexual immorality, sexual perversion, infidelity, adultery. Why, that, why does that happen? Because that person does not have a a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. You don't go on a lifestyle of prayer and fasting for religious reasons because it's just a good godly thing to do. You do it because you want to go before God and just say, you know what, God, even though you're climbing me to the highest heights and you're promoting me to the uh, to the highest places, I still want to fast and turn my plate down and say, it is not by my works, God. I ain't even all that smart. I ain't going to be on that. If you don't help me, if these people keep coming to cover by God and you're not there, what are we going to do? Because surely I'm not God. Everybody knows that because you say something stupid to me, I'm going to say stupid, stupid, bad. I'm not God. We need you, Lord. You see what I'm saying?
Okay. So nothing's wrong with you. I just wanted to say that. Um, before we get into a few scriptures, let me say this. Number one, any of you that have a dreaming life, I get this email all the time. Tiffany, what books can I read on dreaming? Let me tell you something. 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 You guys, this is a gen this is the most illiterate generation of biblical. Well, I can't say the most because it's the only generation I've been a part of. But my God, we are biblically illiterate. And the truth is, any of you that call yourself a believer that is not well versed in the word of God, you are in trouble. It's just that simple. You cannot you cannot sustain yourself with a proper weapon reading books. You cannot sustain yourself with a proper weapon following your favorite YouTubers and your favorite Instagrammers who are Christian influencers. You can't sustain your Christian life that way. You can't sustain the fighting the good fight of faith that way. You can't even pick up your sword without having that information. You have to understand that you have to know scriptures. And so any of you that dream, any of you that have a dreaming life and you are asking questions like, well, what's the best book to read on dreams? Or let me Google my dreams. You are already in trouble. You are already in big, big trouble. There is a spiritual war going on out here if you guys didn't know it. And the realm of the spirit is much more real than even the natural world. At all times, even while you're asleep, they are fighting, period. The enemy doesn't rest. Angels don't rest. It is a full out war out here and you just snoring it away. What I want to do while God has given me this influence that I have, um, what I want to do is I want to bring a generation of people back to studying the word of God, back to fighting with scripture. And why do I feel like this is very important to do? One of my favorite movies to watch is World War Z. I'm a big zombie fan. And when they landed themselves in Israel, and that was like the only country that, you know, was still standing. He was like, Brad Pitt was like, why are you saving all these people? And he said, one less zombie out there is one less Zombie, we have to fight in here. So the more people I save, the less people I'm going to have to fight. And I really feel like that's the case for our generation, right? Like the more people, at least with my influence, while God has me doing what I'm doing out here on the earth, the more people I can get in the word of God, the more people I can get to kill idolatry, the more people I can get to break these evil covenants, the more people I can get to be a repairer of the breach, the more people I can get that you never thought was going to be saved in your life. And they are like going hard for God is the one less person, y'all, we got to fight in the world system. It's one less person. Okay. So let me say this. If you have in dreams, you don't want to Google it. The first place that Google is going to take you guys is to a new age website to get the interpretation. Most people got into angel numbers that way because they, the next thing you looked at was angel numbers. And because you are biblically illiterate um, and you know angels are in the Bible and you know numbers are in the Bible, you took that as a God thing. And because most of you have confirmation idolatry, meaning that you don't take God's word for it, but as long as he gives you 10,000 confirmations, then you'll believe it without recognizing that the devil also gives 10,000 and confirmations, you're in trouble. Angel numbers is demonic. It is um, new age. It is the occult. I don't care which one of your favorite influencers talk about angel numbers. I would, I could care less. It is demonic. If it does not, if you can't find it in scripture, it's not there. There's nowhere in scriptures that you will see angel numbers. There is nowhere in the Bible you will find angel numbers. It is demonic. And really what it is, is a play off of tarot cards. And it was just an easier way to get people deceived into that world because most people know what tarot cards are. Even if the unsaved are like, I don't play around with tarot cards. I'm not going to play around with angel numbers. Okay. That's sounds sweet. That sounds Christian-like. And why do people go towards occultic new age kind of practices? Because by nature, God designed us to worship. We are beings that were designed to worship. Our, our By nature, when he created us out of the dust, we were created to worship God. 
Well, when you walk away from worshiping God, because our being and our nature is to worship something, you got to find something else to worship. And because you don't feel like stopping the lifestyle you in, you still want to smash, you know what I'm saying? You still want to get pop. You still want to spread it wide and lay it low. You still want that D. You're not going to stop none of that. But because your nature is to still worship, you go and find a God that will compromise with you and say, hey, you don't have to. You find a God that doesn't require your best. You find a God that doesn't require you to be faithful to him. You find a God that doesn't require your fidelity and your honesty and your love. He's like, no, I'll be the side chick God to you. So go ahead and serve me because what you don't know is I come with conditions. And even though you're going to be a side chick, I'm going to be your side chick God to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bind up your kids. That's what you don't know. I'm going to get the next generation because you're going to you're gonna pay me what you owe me. So I'm going to give you a discount of me, but you them kids you got and their families, I'm going to own them from here on out. That's why you choose that God. That's why you guys are looking at horoscopes and tarot cards and things of that nature. Those gods don't require anything of you because our God, the jealous, first of all, he says, I'm jealous. Jehovah, God that made heaven and earth is definitely jealous. Like he's the most jealous God in the whole wide world. He's not sharing. He's not sharing you. That's number one. Number two, our God requires fidelity. He wants you to be faithful. Just like you want that dude to be faithful to you that you keep crying over. God is like, oh, oh, so now you know how it feels. Now you know how it feels. Now you know how it feels. You feel... So I just want you to take that into account, ladies and men who keep sleeping with everybody because you can't stop because you got a soul tie now. So now you like addicted to them like it's crack. You know what I'm saying? But I want you to take into account that the same way you want this dude to be faithful to you, the same way you want this woman to be faithful to you is the same fidelity that God is requiring from you. And because you're created to worship something, but you know, this God requires like he not playing with you, you just say, you know what? I'll just worship my boyfriend. I'll just worship these tarot cards. I'll, angel number sounds very Christian-esque. It doesn't sound all that demonic. I'll just start worshiping that. I hope y'all understood that analogy. Don't Google your dreams because it's stupid and it's all new age websites and things of that nature. And to be honest with you, I don't want you to read no books on dreams. I don't want you to do it. I want you all, listen to me and listen to me deep. I want you all to grab the Bible. I want you to grab the Bible. And I want you to study everybody in the Bible that had a dream. Any of my dreamers on here, I want you to begin to study everybody in the Bible that had a dream. Before you pick up a book, before you, because here's the thing. Whenever you start reading books on stuff, and you have not read the word of God, you now can't even discern if the person you're learning from is telling you the truth or not. Do you know these people lie? These people lie. They have mixed new age with the occult. And here y'all are listening to everything everybody's saying, trying to get an interpretation of a dream when it's only God that gives interpretations of dreams. It is only the Holy Ghost. So what are we going to do as part of your homework assignment? You're not going to read any more books on dreams. Throw them in the trash for now. What you are, I don't care what the reputable author is. I don't care what author it is that is Holy Ghost filled. I don't care. What I want you to do is I want you to get your interpretation from scripture and scripture only. Get your interpret. I want you to go in the Bible and I want you to read every person in the Bible that has ever had a dream. I want you to see how the angel talked to them in a the dream or how God talked to them in a the dream. I want you to study this so that when you start reading books, which nothing is wrong with reading books, something is wrong with you reading books if you read books more than you study scripture. Because I'll give you an example. The Bible is your your full course meal, right? It's your it's your vegetable, it's your protein. It's your starch. It's your full course meal. The books you read is just your vitamin. It's your supplement, right? It's your multivitamin for the day. Because 
most of you don't like eating your full course meal for whatever reason, you go and get books. And so all of all you're doing all day long is eating vitamins all day. You know that you'll get sick doing that. As a matter of fact, most vitamins can't even be taken without food or you'll get nauseous. You understand? So most of you spiritually are nauseous. Most of you spiritually are sick because you have an unbalanced diet and the enemy has tricked you into thinking you're learning something because you have balanced your diet with reading more books than you have Bible. And now you're just all over the place. You're nauseous in the realm of the spirit. You don't feel good. Your stomach hurt. And you're trying to figure out why you don't have a real appetite for the word of God. It's because your diet has been is sick. You're sick. And most of the time when you're sick in real life, you lose your appetite. Could it be you have lost your appetite for the word of God because you're spiritually sick? Just a question. You know what I'm saying? Holy Ghost first. Read your Bibles. This will not be a generation of people that is so well versed on what's going on on social media, what's going on, who died, who's living, who's sleeping with who, who got with who, what's good on TV, what movie need, and you don't know the word of God. Not doing it. Because what I'm not going to do, me, while God has given me this influence, I'm raising up warriors. Period. I'm raising up people who I'm not stronger than. I think I would have done you all a disservice while you are under my tutelage to still stand stronger than you all spiritually. To still stand, when, I hate when people say, well, I'm praying, I'm not as strong as you in prayer. Why not? Y'all do know I'm regular. Not really, but you know what I'm saying? I'm like very not regular, but just trying to like prove a point here. I'm regular, just like you. Okay, I get pissed off just like you. I'm in love just like you. I get hungry just like you. Why not? I'm not doing nothing different. I have to kill my flesh to not see what the latest is on social media just like you. So why not? What, what makes me different? I just make a decision to pray. I make a decision. Y'all see what I'm saying. What am I trying to say? Holy Ghost first. So first thing I want to show you in the Bible, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 15 very quickly. And the first thing I want to show you is that covenants can be made in dreams. This is, again, this live is, I started to notice, I got at least 15 to 20 emails. So it's pretty a lot for me to get an email about the same thing in a very, maybe a three-day period. And these people were all saying, Tiffany, all of a sudden I'm eating in my dream. Somebody's trying to feed me something in my dream. Is something wrong with that? And because I know how God talks to me because it was so many people in such a short amount of time, I knew that this was something that needed to be addressed. And it is both startling and exciting all at the same time. It is exciting because I know that this fast that we're currently on, this 25 day fast that's almost over is very powerful. And you all have been effectively breaking evil covenants, breaking curses, breaking contracts that's been in the bloodline for a long time now. The startling thing about it is, is that the enemy is like not letting you go. And he's like, in this dream, let me go ahead and make them covenant themselves back to me again. And the issue is, if you don't know what to do upon waking up, the covenant is going to stay there. And that's why I'm doing this live to help you out of that. This also goes for those of you who are having sex in your dreams and things of that nature. Um, that is also a way to covenant you back into an evil covenant in the dream. Because here's the thing, no warden wants to see his prisoner go free. So many, many people are like, Tiff, how long I got to pray against this? I've already broke the covenant, baby. What, what warden do you see in any movie wants to see their prisoner goes free? This demon has been on your bloodline for hundreds of years. It is not interested in watching you all of a sudden saying a cute prayer and letting you go forever at all. So you want to continue to war against this for your children, your children's children, your children's children, children, and things of that nature. So that when you've gone on to glory and the fifth generation from you is rising up and there's a Deborah in that generation or a Joseph in that generation, there's a hedge of protection around them from something a praying grandmother did you five, five generations ago. This is why you see a lot of demonic stuff happening on bloodlines. It's because you saw something 
what somebody did five generations ago demonically that is still speaking against a generation five generations later. Well, guess what? After you pray for you, baby, you better get on that bloodline so that your children's children's children have a hedge around them. So no matter what stupid decision they make, it's like God is always yoking them back up. Like, no, I'm making, I'm keeping a promise I made to Tiffany. I don't care. You, you, I don't care nothing about you because you're doing the most. You in idolatry, you're doing all that. But because of Tiffany's prayers, 5,000 years ago, because of Tiffany's prayers 200 years ago, there was a woman that walked this earth named Tiffany. And because of the prayers that she's prayed, I am keeping my covenant with her for her generation. That's why you want to continue to pray. Nonetheless, go with me to Genesis chapter 15. We're going to start in verse 12. The Bible says, and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo and behold, a horror and great darkness fell upon him. So I want you to notice that this was while he was asleep. A deep sleep fell upon Abram. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that your seed will be. <laughs> but I want you to go down to verse 18 because you're going to read all of this on your own. But in verse 18, it says, in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying unto thy seed, have I given this land? And from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and you can read down. So the first thing I want you to notice is that covenant was made during a time of sleep. God made a covenant with Abram before he was awake. He was still asleep and a covenant was made. Are we clear on that? Covenants can be made while you are asleep. Covenants can be made while you are asleep. Um, another place I want to take you very quickly is first Kings chapter three, verse five. The Bible says in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. Do you remember that time where he was like, God, give me an understanding heart. Give me wisdom. I don't know what to do with these people you've given me. And God was like, because you didn't ask me for money, for fame, for people like none of that. I'm going to make you the richest and wisest man that ever lived this earth. And I'm going to give you the wisdom that you asked me for. You guys, I always thought that happened while he was awake. That happened in a dream. God gave God gave Solomon this huge fame and money because of a covenant he made with him in a dream, okay? That's 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5. Verse five. You can read that on your own. I'm going to take you back to Genesis chapter 31, verse 10. You can read this on your own, but this is a story about how God gave Jacob a provisional idea, a provisional instruction during a dream. What is provision? Provision is when you need some money. Provision is when things are looking a little funny and some famine or it's a little bit of dirt that's going on in the land and you don't know how to make ends meet. And God was like, here's what you're going to do. And he tells them what to do in a dream. You can study that in Genesis 31. Before I go to my last point, my last scripture, I'm going to take you to Job 33 really quick because I think that this is powerful. Job 33 verses 14 says, for God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. So while you're awake, God says something to you once or twice and you still not getting it. You like, I don't know what this is. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon a man and slumberings upon a bed, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instructions. So God is like, they not even listening, do nothing I got to say while they awake. I'll wait till they're asleep. I'll open up their ears. I'll open up their ears and I'll seal their instructions in there. Why? That he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Keeping back his soul from the pit, his life from perishing by the sword. You can read that on your own. I just think it's super powerful how God just even lets us know how this happens. Now, one of the definitions of the word instruction is discipline and correction. So he says, I speak once, twice, and the man doesn't perceive it. But in a dream and a vision of the night, while he's still asleep, I'm going to open up his ears and I'm going to seal the instruction. Or in other words, I'm going to correct and bring discipline while they're asleep. Okay. Um, you'll find that when you look at Abram's first dream, there was instruction, there was discipline, there was correction, and then there was the promise. 
Now, um, this is the last scripture I'm going to give you before I'm going to tell you what to do when you wake up from those dreams of you eating in your dreams. But Genesis chapter 40, verse 8, and I want you to just take heed of this. It says, and they said unto him, this is when Joseph is in the jail. The butler and the baker have a dream. They wake up disturbed from these dreams and he's asking them, why, why do you look so sad? What's going on? And they said, we've had a dream, but there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God. Any of you who have dreams, I want you to write that down on a notebook and just put it on your nightstand before you go to Google again, before you read a book, before anywhere. I want you to keep that in your mind, that sentence. Do not interpretations belong to God. Interpretations of dreams belong to God. Google is not God. Google is not God. If you wake up and upon waking up, the first place you went was to Google, you have made Google your God. If the first thing you did not do was get on your face and say, God, you are the interpreter of dreams. I believe I know what this dream means or I have no idea. It's just so weird. What can you, can you help me? Now, this instant, Joseph was an, he was a dreamer, but he was also, God had gifted him with interpretation. Now, dream interpretation is not a, classified as a gift in the Bible, just so we're clear. Dream interpretation is not classified as a gift in the Bible. I have not seen it. Okay. He then says, tell me them, I pray you. So here's two things I want you to understand when you read this scripture. The, it was a butler and a baker. I think it's very interesting that there's two B words, butler and baker. The butler has a dream, right? It's something that wouldn't have made sense to none of us. He says, hey... There was a vine. There were three branches. It, uh, the branches budded and her blossoms shot forth and the clusters there are brought forth grapes. The Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. I took the grapes. I pressed them into the Pharaoh's cup and I gave the cup to the Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, this is the interpretation of that dream. The three branches mean three days. Within these three days, Pharaoh's going to lift your head up. He's going to restore you back to your place and all of that. It's going to be great. You know, he's and he's like, hey, why are you up there? Can you remind him that I'm down here and I didn't do what I was accused of doing? Right. So he gave him a, not just an interpretation of a dream, but he gave him a deadline of the dream. He said, this means in three days you're going to be restored. But what I thought was powerful was that the, it was the baker's turn. And the Bible says in verse 16, when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream. And behold, I had three white baskets on the head. And in the uppermost basket, there was a manner of all baked meats for Pharaoh. And the birds did eat them out of the baskets upon my head. Now, here's what I want y'all to think is powerful. Y'all, this, this whole live is about anybody during this fast that's been eating in a dream. I didn't even know. I have probably read this scripture a million times. It was, I was yesterday years old when I realized that the person that got the judgment dream, there was eating in the dream. So you got the baker and the butler who have a dream. We just got done reading the butler and the butler's dream interpretation was, even though you're in jail with me right now, in three days, you're getting ready to be restored back to your rightful place. But the baker just had a dream. He's like, okay, that dream sounds very positive. Let me tell you my dream. There was eating in his dream. There was eating in his dream. He said the birds, there was a basket, all manner of baked meats for the Pharaoh. And the birds ate them right out the basket upon my head. Now, if we're looking at this dream from our own natural eyes, we don't see nothing wrong with it, to be honest with you. What, what was wrong with this dream? There was nothing wrong with it from our own eyes. I don't see nothing wrong with it. He's a baker. There's baskets full of baked meats. The birds are eating them out of the basket upon his head. And here goes Joseph answered, this is the interpretation. Those baskets represent three days. And within those three days, Pharaoh's going to lift up your head from off of you. And you're going to hang on a tree. And the birds, they're going to eat the flesh from off of you while you're hanging on that tree. And as you read in three days, 
verse 21, he restored the chief butler. And in verse 22, he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. One dream was restoration. Another dream was judgment. Okay. So if you find yourself during a fast eating in a dream or having sex in a dream, I want you to know, number one, immediately I want you to know that there is a demon trying to renew a covenant with you. There is a renewal of an evil covenant that they're trying to renew with you. You may say, Tiffany, this thing keeps coming back. How long am I supposed to do it until you don't have a dream no more? This is not a question of the spiritual world doesn't go off of your tiredness. The spiritual world doesn't go off of your, you know, I'm done. How much longer I got to do this? They're hoping that you quit today, actually. It could care less how tired or fed up or frustrated. You know, this world is, is ancient. Like you're like how old? 32, 35, 55, 62. This thing has been around for since the beginning of time. It's ancient. It's way older than you. Doesn't care how tired you are. So I'll give you an example. I remember I used to have dreams of my old house. Anytime you have a dream about your old house, childhood house, anything of that nature, it's never good. It speaks of a spirit of delay. This is years ago. It speaks of a spirit of delay. And I remember I kept just saying, at first, I just didn't know why I was having the dreams. And so you end up going, you know, uh, you end up going for, you know, years and not knowing why you're having this dream, not even praying on it until you get a revelation and saying, oh, shoot, this represents delay. And you wake up and you begin to war against being in that old childhood house. Well, then the dreams went from having them once a month to having them once a year. And then, but I would still wake up mad and saying, I'm not supposed to be having these dreams at all. So I would go on a fast, three day fast, seven day fast, maybe a one day fast and go to war against that. And I just never have had it again in my life. So when do you stop? You stop when the dreams stop coming. Now, here's one thing I want you to recognize, you know, when the Bible says like, our kingdom come, our will be done on earth as it already is in heaven, I want you to realize what that really meant. It meant that in heaven right now, things are brewing. There's plans and plots against you that's happening right now. They're happening and it hasn't made it to, he to earth yet. On earth as it already is in heaven, it's already here. It hasn't made it here yet. Because you belong to God, if you are a born again believer, because there's a difference between a psychic and a prophet, right? A, both of us can see. That's why they're accurate. That's why people get so blown away at the accuracy of somebody that works in the dark arts. They can see. The issue is they can't change what they saw in the realm of the spirit. And as a born again believer, we can. And so whenever you see something in a dream, most of you think they're nightmares and sometimes they are, but it's still the enemy letting you in on what the plan is. It's already brewing. God is showing you what is brewing in, the, in, on, in heaven before it gets to earth. That way, before it gets here, you wake up and say, God, thank you. Even if it was a bad dream, thank you for letting me know of this secret intel. Thank you for letting me know what the enemy had planned for me. And if it's already being scheduled up there, the Bible says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That thing I saw in my dream is already formed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command it to deform itself now. I command there to be a divine dissolving of that plot and plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it to be destroyed. I want you to look up the definition of the word formed. I want you to look up the synonyms of the word formed. I want you to look up the antonyms, which is the opposite of the word form, baby, and use that in your prayer points. OK, anything that is formed needs to be one of the antonyms is dissolved. It means disorganized. One of the words formed me. This is something that is organized. This is something that is well put together in the name of Jesus. I command a disorganization of whatever thought it was going to form against me. Your word said it can't do it. Your word said, God, nothing formed against me can prosper. The Bible says this is my inheritance. It, I have an inheritance for being your servant. One of those things is that this thing has to deform itself. And you're going to be specific. Some of you are having dreams of your children in accidents. Some of you are having dreams of you in accidents. Some of you are having dreams of sicknesses or premature death. Guess what? God in his mercy is showing you this, what the enemy has planned and plotted for you. 
And you want to wake up immediately and come against it. You want to wake up immediately and break the covenant, right? So number one, again, if somebody is having sex with you in your dream, likely it's somebody you know, likely it's somebody you're still in love with, likely it's somebody that you wish would come back in your life. That is a familiar spirit. And the reason it's coming in the form of that face is because it knows that you're not likely going to fight it off and you're going to think that this is God and you're going to think it means that you all should be together again. No, it means that this thing is trying to make covenant with you because now this demon doesn't want you married. And now anytime you date somebody in real life, they're going to leave you for no reason. You're a perfect catch and they're going to leave you for no reason. Why? Because you have not gotten to a revelation that the realm of the spirit is much more real than the natural realm. And they don't know why they didn't like you anymore all of a sudden when everything looked like it was going great. But that 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 demon spirit now that has been having sex with you in your dreams are like that's my that's that's me. <laughs> you think I'm gonna get that up? Nah, cause I had her mama, I had a grandmama, I had a few of her uncles, I had a few of her grandfathers, and I'm not finna let her go. I have a good time with her in her dream. She wakes up wet. She wakes up aroused. As a matter of fact, when she wakes up, when he wakes up, he has to relieve himself. She has to relieve himself, which now that's how, that's how you know how real dreams are. You, somebody was having sex with you in your dream. And when you wake up, you have to finish it off to have your orgasm. That's, that's to let you know how real that demon was in your dream that has now married you. That's what happened. Covenants are also made through food, through eating. That's why they're trying to come in your dead grandmother, the one you really loved, Big Mama. I don't know what you call your grandma, but the one you really love. And you say, well, she gave me some good wisdom, baby. It was a demon. It was a demon. She's not talking to you. The Bible says that the dead don't know what the living are doing. That's what scripture says. They're not alive. What happened was the demon came in the face of your grandmother or mother or father um, or your favorite person that died that you really want to see again because you're dealing with demonic grief at this point. They came as the face of this person because they knew that you would not wake up and cast it out. That's what happened. The Bible says, not Tiffany says, the Bible says that the dead don't know what the living are doing. That's what the Bible says. Don't ask me no more questions about dead people talking to you in your dream. I'm only telling, I don't have to live your life. So if you like chatting it up with the dead in your dream, have at it, you are talking to a demon. Ain't no need to go back and forth with me about this. I could care less, okay? But what I am telling you is you're not talking to that relative. You're talking to a demon because the Bible says that the dead do not know what the living are doing. Tiffany didn't say that. The Bible says that the dead don't know what the living are doing. They should not be coming back to saying anything to you in a dream. You have the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we know that covenants can be made in dreams. So while you are busy fighting covenants, breaking evil covenants in your fasting time, obviously when you go to sleep, the enemy wants to renew that covenant with you. you. You have sex in your dream. You're eating food in your dream. All of a sudden you wake up, you do nothing about it. We learn that things are formed in the realm of the spirit before they even come down in the natural. A lot of the times when y'all say things like, I had a dream about that and it happened, that's not necessarily a good thing because a lot of the times, not in all cases, but a lot of the times we can stop that in the realm of the spirit through intercession. Okay. So what do you do when you wake up from a sex dream, from an eating dream immediately upon waking up, you want to get on your face and you want to begin to renounce the dream. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I had a dream of eating in a dream and I have been vehemently fasting and praying that these evil covenants are broken. First of all, I repent for any door that was open in my life that would have caused um, me to be able to have uh, eat any dream. Uh, whatever I did, whatever door that was open for me or my ancestors, I repent. It doesn't hurt to repent, right? We should be living a lifestyle of repentance anyway. 
The second thing you do after you repent is you now renounce it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I renounce. I come out of agreement with. I break myself from. I denounce every evil covenant that I came into in my dream. Every Any food that I ate, God, that brought me back into an evil covenant, any sex that I had in my dream that brought me back into an evil covenant, I renounce myself from it. I denounce myself from it. I divorce myself from it. Let heaven and earth record this day that I am not covenanted with the devil. I don't, I have nothing to do with the devil. I don't, I don't, I don't, he has, I have nothing to give him. I don't owe him anything. I am cut. And then the third thing you want to do is replace. We re repent, renounce and replace. Repent, renounce, replace. What does replace look like? Father, I now, as an act of my will, out of my mouth, make a public declaration in the realm of the spirit and in the natural to declare that I am covenanted with you. I am a part of the new covenant of Jesus Christ, the better covenant, the better covenant. I am, you have rule, reign, and dominion over my marriage. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my reproductive system. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my bloodline. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my spouse, your husband or wife, whoever you are. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my children. You have rule, reign, and dominion over my finances. Father, I decree that every part of my being, everything that I belong to, everything that I am is covenanted with you. you I am a part of the new covenant of Jesus Christ. I owe the devil nothing. I am no longer in covenant with him and I break it now. And then if I were you, I would pray in the Holy Ghost and even turn down my plate, right? I would fast, even if just for the day, depending on what kind of dream you had. And baby, I'm turning down my plate for the day and I'm warring in the spirit. And one thing I'm going to do on a regular basis, Papa, come here. One thing I'm going to do on a regular basis, me, I'm going to repeat the word of God over and over again. I do that. The Bible says, um, meditate on the word day and night. One of the definitions of that word meditate, you can find that in Joshua chapter one, I think it's verse eight. Meditate, hand me my purse right here. Meditate on the word day and night. Meditate means roar, but it also means to mutter and murmur and say over and over again. It also means to imagine. So if I wake up to a dream like that, what am I going to do? I'm going to like begin to um, murmur and I'm going to start saying the scripture over and over again. And I have a clicker. Yeah. Me, just because, why not? So I'm going to wake up, right? And I'm going to be like, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon. I'm not even leaving my room till I got a hundred of them. I declare no weapon formed against me shall prosper. 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 Then when I'm done with that, I'm going over to Isaiah 7, 7. Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. God, you said it will not stand, it will not come to pass. You said it will not stand, it will not come to pass. It will not stand, it will not come to pass. It will not stand, it will not come to pass. It will not stand, it will not come to pass. This will not stand, it will not come to pass. You will not stand, you won't come to pass. You won't stand, you won't come to pass. You won't stand, you won't come to pass. You won't stand in back. You won't stand in You're not adding my little words in it or whatever. What I'm saying is, is I done got 26 clicks in right there. You know what I'm saying? I got 26. Somebody said they got apps. You know, I'm really old school. I still use, you know, notebooks and stuff. I'm not really good with, you know, I just still like my old school. Because here's the thing. I like to do it in my bed before I get out the bed and stuff like that. And I don't keep a lot of electronics in my bed because I think that, you know, People have an addiction to electronics and you just need to break it. And so if you want the old school way so that you don't have to rely on your phone, you know, it's very easy to get on social media on your phone, things of that nature. You may want to like get, you don't want to use your phone or use an app for everything. So you can get, it's Isaiah 7, 7. Yeah, you shall not say, you shall not kind of pass or no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rides up against you in judgment, condemn, 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 condemn. You can use whatever scripture you want. You can say, by your stripes, I'm healed. By your stripes, I am healed. By your stripes, I am healed. By your stripes, I am healed. Father, you said you, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. By your stripes, I am healed. 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 Every stripe you took, I am healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. You know? So get you a little clicker. You know what I'm saying? And get the counting downs. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Eight. This book 
of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. Now, there's two promises to that scripture. You're going to make your way prosperous. You're going to have good success. But those are conditional pro pro uh, those are conditional promises to you meditating on the word day and night. The word meditate. When you look up the Hebrew definition of the word meditate, it means to one of the definitions of the word is to roar r-o-a-r -R, meditate to roar it also means to speak it also means to imagine it means to study it means to utter it has quite a few different definitions but i like to meditate on the word day and night okay day and night Somebody said the weapons prophet Tiffany uses, pulls out is so unexpected all the time. I know, right? Because like, who would have this sitting around in their purse? <laughs> I'd be at a red light. Well, you want to know why though? Because I'm like, whenever anything, the what you listen to the most and what you focus on the most comes in your mind in a time of need, Right? And so let's say you stressed out and something's happening immediately, my mind, a scripture come up or a worship song come up. That's what that's. So really what I'm doing is training my mind. It might not even be for that moment. I'm doing that. You know what I'm saying? But it's for um, it's for a moment. If if somebody calls me and they got an issue that needs to be prayed up or something happens immediately, fear doesn't come in. There's a scripture that's coming in because I done said it 100 times today. And the first thing that comes up is, oh, it won't stand. It won't kind of pass. It's not going to stand. It won't kind of pass. And because I know my declaration out of my mouth is powerful, I just turn that into a prayer point. Father, in the name of Jesus, you said. The Bible says in Isaiah 7, 7, not Tiffany. It said, thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand. It shall, can, shall not kind of pass. Concerning this issue that this person just called me with, I make a declaration on this earth as your prophet. It shall not stand. It shall not kind of pass. Whatever the CDC is saying right now over this earth, that whatever's coming is going to be worse than COVID-19, lest you sent it, God, and you're going to keep us covered by it, I prophesy against it. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that me, anybody connected to cover by God, anybody that is a part of the body of Christ, it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass. Any recession that they're talking about, any lack of finances, anything in the banking industry that they're going to say you're going to lose, baby, it don't apply to me. And I declare over me and mine and anybody connected to cover by God, it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass. And that's just that. Like you got to learn how to take a scripture and multiply it into a few different things. You know what I'm saying? It shall not stand. I don't care what report the doctor gave you, baby. You would. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. You better declare that thing. It shall not stand. It shall not come to pass. That's what you got to do. So the enemy is definitely threatened by you. It may not seem like your fast is working. It may not seem like you're making any dents, but baby... They are threatened and your dreams should let you know that they are threatened. And this is a good thing. I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to get weary in well-doing. I don't want you to start getting weird. I want you to continue to wake up. I want you to pray. I want you to war against it. And then when you're done with that, forget about it and just start worshiping. Get it out your mind. Start focusing on God. Say, you know what, God? I believe that you've heard me. And I thank you that this is happening. And if you go to sleep and a dream come back again, wake up, say, I already dealt with this, but I renounce it again in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, if there's any hidden open door, Holy Spirit, let me know what it is so I can repent for it. But if the door has been completely closed, I declare that this enemy is in high treason for bothering me because there's no legal ground and there's no legal right for them to be doing that. So in the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of infirmity. I command any spirit of poverty. I command any spirit of adultery. I command any spirit of sexual perversion. I command whatever you're dealing with, you need to tell that thing to go. Like these things don't have legal right. And the only thing is still harassing you is because you have not stood up in your authority authority to tell it to go. It has to by law, by spiritual law. It has to by law. Listen to you. Somebody says, what should a person do if their parent or somebody in their bloodline is currently practicing idolatry and you're fighting against it? Baby, you focus on you. You, you repent on behalf of you and your ancestors who are dead. You focus on you and your children. 
That's all. You focus on you and your children. You focus on you and your children. You ask God, you know, you bind up whatever they got going on. So it's not operative on the bloodline anymore. You have the power to do that. You can bind up their works and begin to pray about that. Somebody says, wait, so why does Reverend James Solomon talk about dreams in his book? Mia, were you here for this whole live today? Were you here for the live? Or are you just hopping in? Because I'm going to just refuse to believe real quick that you've been here this whole time. Listening to me talking about dreams. I'm going to just... Our next fast is coming up June 1st through the 3rd. So if you guys want to join us, we get up at 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for three days and we pray and we fast. We fast between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. I have a secret for you. You're not going to die. I know. I know. I know. I know you feel like. That you can't turn down your plate and not eat food for 12 hours. I know. But you can do it. You're not going to die. Your flesh is going to die. That pride is going to die. That attitude is going to die. Your addiction to sugar is going to die. That sexual perversion is going to die. But you, you won't die. Will you feel like you're dying? I don't know what that feel like by God's grace. But I do know, depending on how dirty your insides are and how much you need a detox, you're going to feel pretty trashy. You're going to have really bad headaches. You're going to have body odor, all of that. But guess what, baby? That stuff was sitting in you, rotting in you anyway. Don't you want it out? Or you want to put makeup on your insides and hide it so nobody can see it. Baby, let that stuff on out of you. It's time to be free. You know what I'm saying? Don't you want to be free? Don't you want to be out of that prison you've been sitting in, trying to make, trying to look good for everybody on social media, and you miserable on the inside, jealous of everybody, covetous of them? You don't got a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of, or you got all this money and you still miserable because you thought money was going to answer all your quite all your problems, and you don't let everybody smash because you thought that you was going all that was going to solve your problems, and now you got a body count of two hundred and all that money sitting in your bank account, and you still empty, and you're still lonely, and you still. Somebody said, move back. I can't because y'all don't hear me when I move back. You know what I'm saying? When I move back, you don't hear me. So I just wanted to say this up close. If you want to fast with us, you're going to fast. And I don't care nothing about you being no beginner. If you're not going to do it on one accord with us, don't do it. But guess what? We get results over here by the grace of God. So if you want to join a fast, go to coveredbygod.co. Again, that is coveredbygod.co. Go ahead and enter your email address. Check your spam folder. We start on June 1st. Now, let me give you the instructions. We're not eating them between the hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., but what you will eat is the word of God. You're going to eat some Bible. Most of y'all a little chubby anyway. You got enough food reserved in you not to have eaten for seven days straight. Let's, let's just be honest. Ain't no need to go back and forth with me about that. You know, you, you know you're a little big. You have enough reserve. We're going to, we're, we're still eating. We're just exchanging real food for spiritual food. You're going to read the word of God. I want you to be big over there. Some of us are anorexic in the things of the word of God, but what we really want to do is be big. We want to be chubby over in scripture. 
Okay. Now, you can eat before 6 a.m. and you can eat after 6 p.m. Because I know people get very befuddled about not eating. You can still eat. You're gonna, if you're that hungry, you can wake up and eat at 6 a.m. Here's the thing, though. We are only eating raw fruit and raw vegetable for three days after 6 p.m. or before 6 a.m. Somebody say it with me. Raw fruit raw vegetable. Tiffany, is coffee, is cough, can we drink coffee with no sugar in it? That's not a raw fruit and raw vegetables, water only. Tiffany, what about a falafel? Is that, these are real emails I get. What about a falafel? Is it raw? Is it a raw fruit or raw vegetable? Tiffany, what about beans? Um, I Googled beans and Google said that beans are a fruit. Okay, uh, let's say I went with you on that. You would still have to eat it raw. And according to your God, Google, you would be poisoned to death because you can't eat raw beans because they're poisonous. So guess that doesn't count <laughs> either. Um, Tiffany, what about um, raw, raw fruit, raw vegetable only for three days, you guys, only for three days, only for three. You can make you three big salads. For three days, no ranch dressing. The only thing that's approved is Newman's olive oil and vinegar. But you'll get all this in an email. Okay? You'll get all of this in an email. Raw fruits and vegetables. Raw. If you want to go to this email, go sign up for the emails. Your answers are there. Now, this is not your time to get crafty on Google to find out what raw is or raw not. Go and just make you some salads and eat that. Don't be cute. We're just drinking regular water, regular water, regular, regular spring water, regular water, no coconut water, regular water. Unless you're drinking your coconut water straight from the coconut, regular water. Regular water. Regular water. Regular water. If you're going to do smoothies, just eat raw fruit and drink regular water. And if you're going to order your smoothie, which most people do, make sure you order it without the turbinado in it and order it without sugar in it. Because y'all y'all smoothies have tons of sugar in it. What's the point? Nonetheless, that is our fast. More importantly than us focusing on the physical food that we can and can't eat, no smoothies don't count. Water only. But instead of focusing on the food that we can and can't eat, you guys, we will just only be focusing. Tea doesn't, it's no water only. Water, regular water, 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 just regular water, just regular water, water, water. Somebody say it with me, water. Can I get like a hundred of you to put that in the comments? Water, water, not tea, water, not smoothies, water, 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 just water, just water, only water, just water. If it's called tea, that means it's not just plain water. If you got to put something in it, it's not plain water. Just, just regular water, just regular water. Tea with honey, not water. Just, just regular water, just water. Somebody say it with me, water. Just you want me to come closer to the water. Just water. I told y'all when I step back, y'all don't listen to me. I should have sat that up close to the thing to the thing because when I when I step back back here, you don't listen to me no more. When I come close to the thing, y'all ain't got no more questions. You know what I'm saying? I should have came up close when I said water. It's just water. It's just water. Now on occasion I'll be starting to think demons be talking through you sometimes because these instructions aren't hard. Raw fruit and vegetables. You can make you a raw salad. You know, raw means not lightly steamed. Raw means not lightly baked. Raw means not, not cooked at all. Raw means raw, like raw, raw. Water only. Water only. This is for our three-day fast that we do all the time. First three days of every single month. Um,
raw, um, just regular water, guys. Not not sparkling water and not seltzer water. Just regular water. Just three days. It's just three days. It's just three days. Just a regular water. If you by any chance want to do your own thing, don't join this fast. I know some people won't like that I said that, but find you or somebody else to care. I don't. Uh, I believe that we will see a move of God like we've never seen before that he did in the book of Acts when we all move on one accord. Uh, I believe that a lot of people are just rebellious and full of pride and they want to do their own thing. And this fast, by the grace of God, has given us a lot of testimonies, um, a lot of miraculous testimonies, very powerful powerful testimonies. And uh, I don't want to mess anything up because you want to do your own thing. If you want to do your own thing, do your own fast by yourself. But please don't come over here doing your own thing and then latch on with us because you already coming in with a spirit of rebellion e anyway. And if your fasting didn't kill that, I don't want you a part of what I got going on. No way. You understand what I'm saying to you? So it's only three days. Um, three days is not a lot. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's going to help. If you would like to join, please go to coveredbygod.co. Again, that is coveredbygod.co. Uh, you know ahead of time, so you can start preparing yourself for your delicious salads. Uh, those of us that's been doing it for a while, we kind of got used to it. It was pretty hard the first month or two, but we got used to it. So now we're ready for the first three days every time. And uh, it gets easier and it gets better because your palate starts to cleanse itself out from everything that's trying to kill you. And it starts to like what is there to make it healthier and better. So, let's see. Okay, guys, I think that's it for today. Um... Okay, thank you for uh, saying that. She said, I have some people asking, is it too late to join the year of the bride fast? It ends on the 25th. So, oh shoot, not the 25th. It ends on the 31st. So you can still join. I mean, once you sign up to get the emails, you're going to get the emails for the year of the bride fast at one o'clock in the morning anyway, because you're just a part of the list now. Um, but you won't start at day one. I will be redoing the fast um, later this year, so you can join it again then. But it's too late, obviously, to start at day one, but you'll still be getting the email at one o'clock in the morning when you join the email list anyway. So, yeah, it's going to be great. I love you guys to life. I think that is all the instructions I have for now. I will be announcing to you when the next Covered by God is, which is in June. So excited about that. I have taken a well needed break and um i'm excited about that i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited so that is all all right i love you guys to life <laughs>